today we have Dr. Thrower here with us to talk about fatigue and multiple sclerosis. So Dr. Thrower, how common is fatigue in patients with MS? So fatigue is one of the most common symptoms we see in multiple sclerosis. And for many people, it can actually be the presenting symptom uh, of their MS, which makes it kind of challenging because, you know, if you go to your primary care doctor with severe fatigue, there are so many things that could cause that. MS may not be the first thing that comes to mind. What causes fatigue in patients with MS? Yeah, that's the million dollar question. So I would back up and say that there are two types of fatigue we see in MS. There's something called lassitude, which is non-exertional, non-heat related fatigue. And then there's another type of fatigue called nerve fiber fatigue. Nerve fiber fatigue is weakness or visual loss or cognitive changes that are provoked by a sustained activity or by heat. That one we think we have a little better grip on. So that probably is due to old areas of demyelination. So areas where the, the insulation of the nerve fibers have been stripped away either in the brain or spinal cord. The lassitude is a little more challenging and, and there's been a, quite a bit of research on that. You know, we think that there may be components from actual structural damage. So damage to deep gray structures like the thalamus uh, have been associated with a higher risk of lassitude uh, in multiple sclerosis. It may even be immunochemical. So a lot of the inflammatory changes that we see with MS are mediated through inflammatory chemical messengers or cytokines. Those may play a role in, in fatigue in, in multiple sclerosis. And then I would also say that, you know, when we talk about fatigue, we've got primary MS fatigue, which is those two things, the, the lassitude and the nerve fiber fatigue. And then we've got secondary MS fatigue. So if you have disrupted sleep uh, because your legs are spasming at night, or maybe because you have urinary frequency, that could, could lead to daytime fatigue. If you have, if you're on medications, uh, many of our antispasmodics, for instance, uh, can be sedating, that could cause fatigue. If you have physical disability, so maybe your walking has been impacted from your multiple sclerosis and you're doing things to compensate. So for instance, if you have foot drop and you're having to circumduct your leg or swing the leg out and around, you're now using accessory muscles to walk that normally you wouldn't use. And so that can cause an increased energy expenditure and lead to fatigue. How does MS fatigue differ from regular fatigue? Yeah, so you know, we, when we say fatigue, all of us get tired from time to time. And so by definition, MS fatigue should limit the person's ability to function. So it is a whole nother level of, of fatigue. Uh, people with MS have described their lassitude as like having a lead blanket thrown over them. So, so cognitively, they know what they want to do. You know, they want to go to the grocery store, they want to go to the movies, they want to do things, their normal daily activities, but they're physically just unable to get out of the chair or get out of bed and do that. The other analogy that I really like that I think is very descriptive is, is trying to, is people say it's like trying to swim with a fur coat on. So it's just overwhelming, heavy sinking sensation that just, you know, you, you can't physically overcome. How does MS fatigue affect quality of life in these patients? So maybe things like social interactions, driving, working, et cetera. Yeah, so, so fatigue impacts people with MS in so many different ways. There are vocational uh, implications for fatigue. Uh, studies vary, but if you look at why people change the, their vocation or maybe even leave work altogether, the two competing symptoms that we see in MS are either fatigue or cognitive dysfunction. So fatigue is either the first or the second most common cause for vocational disability in MS then you do see impacts on just activities of daily living, getting out of bed, being able to play with your kids, being able to go to the grocery store, you know, social activities are just all impacted by fatigue. And one of the cruel things about fatigue and MS is it is largely an invisible symptom. So, you know, if, if someone has walking issues, you if you see someone using a cane or a walker or a wheelchair, well, that, that symptom is obvious to everybody. Fatigue is not obvious, and it's very frustrating for people with, with MS. Now, here is a symptom that drastically impacts their quality of life, but the average person can't see it. 
it leads to issues within families. We see conflicts within uh, spouses uh, where there are, there are sometimes accusations uh, that the person's not trying hard enough or that they're lazy. And it's just, it's such a, a ubiquitous and insidious symptom that affects so many people with MS. Can caregivers or family members help patients manage with their fatigue? I think for caregivers, support partners, uh, you know, family members, the, th the first thing that helps is just being aware of the fatigue, you know, acknowledging that it exists and that it impacts the quality of life for a person with MS is half the battle. Um, becoming knowledgeable about you know what it is, what it's like, you know, having the first the, the caregiver read up on it. Uh, there are a lot of resources out there from you know the Multiple Sclerosis Foundation, the MSAA, the M National MS Society. All have great you know resources for uh, for reading up and educating oneself on on fatigue. You know, coming up with ways that that you could recognize when a person's having a, a good day or a bad day with energy levels, and being able to jump in and help out with you know whether it's housework or you know, uh, uh, um, you know activities. You know, maybe someone else takes the kid to soccer that day or, or you know, other, and coming up with some flexibility in, in uh, planning, that would be a big help. What treatments are currently available for MS fatigue? So there is no FDA approved treatment, interestingly, for fatigue. Uh, so when we think about the average person with relapsing, remitting MS, we put all of our treatments into one of three boxes. We're either managing relapses we're treating symptoms or we're changing the course of the, of the disease overall. Generally, we think of fatigue as fitting into that second box. It's, it's symptom management. It's a very important part of symptom management. Um, so not everything is medication related. We do believe that regular exercise uh, and a healthy diet will help in terms of, of managing fatigue, good sleep hygiene, managing other symptoms that might be impacting sleep. Minimizing medications that are sedating may, might help with fatigue. Uh, and then we get into prescription medications. So like I said, there's no FDA approved treatment option, but that doesn't mean we don't try things. So there's an old medication called amantadine, which is an old anti-influenza drug that helps some people with their ener energy levels. We use modafinil or the, the sister medicine, R modafinil. These are drugs that were designed to treat narcolepsy, but in some people they can help with, with fatigue and MS. And then the true stimulant drugs. So your, your Ritalin Adderall type medications uh, can be used to help with fatigue. That other type of fatigue, nerve fiber fatigue, which is the more exertional or heat related fatigue, um, there are a class of drugs called aminopyridines. So for aminopyridine or for AP, uh, there's a prescription form called dalfampyridine. They're both, they're both prescriptions. One's FDA approved and one's not. Um, those can actually sometimes help with that nerve fiber fatigue. Those medications work on potassium channels on those naked nerve fibers and may actually help people have better endurance and better heat tolerance. What is your advice for patients with MS fatigue? So talk to your healthcare team about it. You know, one of the things that I believe very strongly is that managing MS really requires a comprehensive and integrated team approach. And so at the center of that team is the person with MS and their family. So if fatigue is a really serious symptom, the person needs to really let, let the healthcare team know about that. And then you know, maybe we get the person into a reconditioning program through physical therapy and exercise physiologists, maybe have the nutritionist work with them on cleaning their diet up, and then try to think about whether medications are going to be you know, appropriate. Right now, we think of that third box, you know, the, the preventing disease progression, not so much as symptom management, so we, that's still vitally important. But it's important that we try to separate those two out as well, that we let people know that their long-term medications to stabilize their disease may not help with their symptoms like fatigue that they're dealing with right now on a, on a daily basis.